Hey guys, it's Aisha from adaycreatives.com here today to share another project with you. Today I'm going to show you how to make a heating pad filled with corn feed. The project does require sewing. I am not a master sewer, but I am um, pretty good at the straight stitch, so I'll be showing you how to do that. For this project, you're going to need corn feed, muslin, cotton fabric, and a needle and thread. These are the dimensions that you'll need for each of the pieces. Feel free to pause it and write it down if you're going to use the same dimensions as me. So to begin, you're going to take your muslin and you're going to fold it in half, and then you're going to allow you're going to stitch along the lines where I have the uh, dotted lines. So here's my muslin. It's folded in half, and I'm going to just stitch it, leaving about a quarter of an inch seam allowance around three of the sides and this part is, is pretty simple it's just like I said it's a straight stitch if you had a serger or some other type of um, way in which to sew it then you can use that as well once I get to the bottom I do use a back stitch to stabilize it or make it a little bit stronger and at the corners as you see I'm not really taking the fabric out of the machine I'm just spinning it around I don't know if that's proper technique or not but that's the way that I do it and then once you sew halfway up the second edge you you're gonna stop you're gonna leave a gap for of about two and a half three inches and that's where we're gonna put our corn in and then I begin it again I started with a little bit of a back stitch there just to make sure that that joint is sealed nicely and that's pretty much it with the muslin until we begin to fill it with the corn Before filling the muslin with the corn, we have to turn it inside out. That whole sewing, I didn't mention it before, when we sew it, it needs to be uh, on the wrong sides out. That way when we spin it over, we have the right side out. This is a hand um, made funnel that I, that I created just to do this project. I did have a normal funnel but the hole was too small for it so I just took a piece of card stock and rolled it into a cone shape and that's what I was using for my funnel and it worked pretty good. I lost a few kernels of corn along the way and um, but for the most part it, it wasn't too bad. Just do it carefully so you don't spill your corn all over the place. For this project I used four cups of corn feed. Okay, once the corn is in the bag, you take it back to the machine and sew up that edge and just keep your needle as close to the edge as possible and making sure that you don't have any holes in the bag anywhere for the corn to fall out of. And then just go back and cut off any strings that are hanging. And at this point, your heat pad is 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 made. If if you uh, want to stop here, you can feel free to do that. I decided to sew off, sew it off into three sections. Doing this would allow the corn to stay clustered together and I believe it would retain more heat doing it this way. I mean, that's not scientifically proven, but I believe <laughs> that it will. Once that part is done, then we go ahead and get our cotton fabric, and these are the dimensions for the cotton fabric. And these are some of the fold lines that I'll be using. I'm gonna fold on the very edges and then stitch that down, and that's gonna allow me to get a nice clean seam. What I'm beginning to do here with the fabric is iron it flat and everywhere that I have indicated for a fold, I'm going to use the iron to create the line for me. 
if you feel more comfortable using pins to mark off, to keep your fabric straight and to mark off where your folds are, you can do that. I'm not a big pinner when I, when I um, sew. I'd rather just iron it flat and get the crease that way and kind of freehand it. So right there, I just fold it down the edge and that's the um, salvage edge. So it's pretty straight. I just folded it once just to get a nice clean, clean edge on the outside of the finished casing. And that's what this part is. This is the casing for the heating pad. And it will allow the user to actually take this part off and wash it if it does get dirty and still be able to keep the uh, part that has the corn in it clean and dry. So on this side, I am now folding it twice. I, sew, I ironed it down flat and then I folded it again and that's just to kind of clean up that cut edge. This is something that some people may just want to use maybe a zigzag stitch over that edge or if someone has a serger, this is a good opportunity to use the serger as opposed to having to fold over and create a hem. But I just did that for a neat edge. Neat edge. So now I'm going back and just sewing down those edges that I folded. And I did no back stitch with this part, only because once the entire thing gets folded, those edges are going to get sewed down again, so it should be pretty secure. I'm not really worried about it coming apart or fraying. And when I was doing the ironing, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but the whole thing is being ironed with the right side facing up. But when we sew it, it's being sewed with the right side on the inside. That makes sense. Okay, so now that my two edges are done, I'm basically just sewing down the very long end of the, the pillowcase. And once I get almost to the top, I'm going to stop and then I'm going to flip up that other side of the case. And, and that's the short end. The short end needs to be on the bottom when, when this is being sewed together. And once it's, everything is laid flat, then I go right over both, both layers of the fabric. And I do a back stitch right where the fabric meets just to make sure that it's nice and, and sturdy into place. And then I'll do the same thing for the other side. When I do the second side, I start on the shorter end, making sure the fabric is flat, double checking to make sure that all of the edges line up neatly, and then sewing straight down that side. Again, when I get to the part where they overlap, I do a back stitch, and then I continue to move forward. And that's just to make sure that the part where the heating pad gets inserted and taken out, that, that it's really sturdy and secure. Make sure I sew all the way to the edge, cut my string, and then pretty much that's it for the pillowcase part of it. I'll go back to my desk here just to finish it off and insert the heating pad into the pillowcase. And I'm just making sure I, I cut off all the strings, making sure that it's neat. And it goes in pr pretty easily. I tried to make the, the case large enough that it would go in easy. I didn't want a super snug fit 
which made it which would make it difficult for it to come out for washing now I'm just using a paintbrush handle and that's just to poke those corners out and make sure that they're um, nice and neat Once that part is done, that's pretty much it for the um, heating pad. And here I'm just showing you how I, I intend to give this as a gift, and so I'm just showing you how one of the ways that I think I'll present it. I created this tag, and the graphic I got from uh, Lettering Delights, I put a few of them together to create it, and on the back I just gave some instructions on how to use it and how to care, care for it. I'm just using some ribbon here, and I'm just tying a, a nice bow and this is some curling ribbon I may continue to use a curling ribbon or I may end up using some fabric ribbon I haven't decided yet um, but it's just uh, just an option in terms of how, how, how to present it And these make really nice gifts. They're easy to care for, especially because the case, the pillowcase comes off of it and they can be heated in the microwave for around two minutes to get to two minutes to get the corn to heat up. Surprisingly the corn does not pop or it should not pop. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer them as best I can. And as always, thank you so much. If you liked it, thumbs up and subscribe. And of course, I'd love to see you over at my blog, adaycreatives.com. Take care. Bye.